Hey guys, welcome back to part six, and this will be the last video for today. And this is going to be part six of Pandemic Definitions 101. If you're just now joining me, um, please consider going back and looking at parts one through five, and there'll be another three coming out tomorrow. And then that'll be the end of the definition series, and I'm gonna move into some stuff about preparing for any kind of situation, whether that's an epidemic or a pandemic. Um, and again, I have to say that at the top of every video, none of this is said to instill panic or fear it is actually the exact opposite of that. It's just to help you feel informed and knowledgeable and like you understand and you're part of the conversation that's happening on every media channel in the world right now. So that is the purpose of these videos and in that vein, I hope you find them helpful. So in this final one today, we're gonna to be talking about things like lockdowns and uh, martial law and things like that. So these videos are filmed in a way that, you know, part one, part two, that they should build one upon the other. So I hope that you are enjoying them in that way. All right, so containment is the action of, so you hear the government saying, you know, we hope that we can contain it and the World Health Organization also saying that we feel that we're trying to contain this situation. So after containment has failed, then you move into mitigation and we're gonna cover both of those in this. Um, so let me cover it. All right, so containment is the action of keeping something harmful under control or within limits. What those limits are, you know, there would be a million definitions today, especially with respect to this situation, but that's the technical definition of containment. And we hear a lot that um, because we don't have a vaccine or a truly viable treatment for this situation that they'll have to use NPIs, which, you know, non-pharmaceutical interventions. And so that's what that means when they say NPI, non-pharmaceutical intervention. Actions that people and communities can use to help prevent or limit the spread of illness, um, incidents, dis distribution, and source of disease or conditions. Um, it, it's a means of prevention or control. So things like social distancing, keeping people away from one another, telecommuting, uh, schools being closed, any of those things are gonna be NPI. So it's, it's done to slow the influx of some kind of a situation into the general population. So that's the point of an NPI. All right, so that brings me to social distancing. Um, and this means measures that are taken to, to restrict when and where people can gather to stop or slow the spread of infectious diseases. Social distancing measures include limiting large groups of people coming together, closing buildings and canceling events. So the very first one that springs to mind is of course the upcoming Olympics, any large sporting events, schools, anything like that. So all of those are gonna be on the table as this situation progresses, kind of depending on what it does, but that's what it means. Um, now we have all seen, you know, real time on Twitter, YouTube and everything else, what a lockdown looks like, but I wanted to go over what it means and, and what it may mean for you. Again, I'm in the United States, so, you know, our government may handle it slightly different than where you live. Um, like the measures that are being taken in China, even though a lot of people think that they're, you know, the term people use is draconian. Um, this would be the one time where I think having that kind of government is actually advantageous because they can just say this is what's happening and you know they have a very very compliant populace there i don't know that that would work quite as well here in the united states or in some other countries regardless this is what it means lockdown is an emergency protocol that usually prevents people or information from leaving an area the protocol can usually only be initiated by someone in a position of authority lockdowns can also be used to protect people inside of a facility for example from a threat of an external event, like in a mass shooting, something like that. Okay, so this is not obviously the same kind of lockdown that you would have during a mass shooting. This would be a lockdown of maybe an entire town or even a state potentially. Um, again, I don't know how that would play out here in the United States, but, but that's what it means. Basically, you're told when and where you can go and that you are not leaving certain areas. Okay, so we at the beginning of the video, we talked about containment. So when containment has failed, you know, you try to control a situation, once it slips through your fingers, now you have to mitigate it, okay? And mitigate is the action of reducing the severity, seriousness, or painfulness of something. So in this context, that would mean mitigating loss of life, right? Mitigating uh, damage to the economy, mitigating slowing down or, or trying to keep a hold of making the impact less severe for people. All right, and so, to that end, as a mitigation tactic, you would have something called medical martial law, 
which exists somewhere between, I think I saw an article and it said, you know, medical martial law exists somewhere between biosafety and freedom. And I think that's a, that's a good way to put it. Um, it's, it's somewhere between freedom, medical martial law, and martial law. Um, and it's defined as a special kind of martial law which could be executed in an emergency situation of high alert from infectious disease where epidemic level grows into pandemic on specific geographic areas. In these circumstances, medical martial law becomes the only way to form the quarantine, build a protocol for screening the viral disease and detect the potentially infected. And it says it seems so to declare medical martial law under the explanation that there is no other policy for protecting citizens other than to protect them from themselves. So I wanted to add that last line. Basically, it's just to protect you from other people. Um, and then you'd have martial law. Martial law means the use of military force with the purpose of control over some populated area, which is considered as problematic because of civil war or any other kind of chaos. Um, a curfew, and, and we've seen this in other countries and, you know, may see it here, who knows? Curfew is basically when they're going to tell you that, you know, you can only be out between this time and this time. And it says a, cur a curfew is an order specifying a time during which certain regulations apply. Typically, it refers to the time when individuals are required to return and stay in their home. So that's what that means. Um, we have no doubt all heard the R word two million times, repatriation. And regardless of how you feel about all of the people that were repatriated here from the various parts of the globe where they were when, when this was you know, coming out, this is what it means. Repatriation simply means to return someone to their own country. That's it. So I know a lot of people have very mixed emotions about um, the fact that we brought back Americans from overseas. You know, That's for another channel and another time. I just wanna give you the straight facts about what it means. So it's just, it, let's say that you have um, you know, Kimberly is over in, uh, you know, China and this situation happens, we're going to repatriate her. We're going to bring her back to the United States. And currently she would have to serve a 14 day quarantine. Maybe serve is not a good word. Cause that makes it sound like a prison sentence, which I'm sure it feels like. All right. Evacuation. Um, and we've definitely heard this term as well is to move people from a dangerous place to somewhere safe. So that would be the difference there. And then the last three, which, I mean, maybe they're not specifically related to this, but if you watch any YouTube videos, you're gonna hear these three terms over and over and over. And I just wanted to touch on them because when you start having things like medical martial law, martial law, curfew, when things like that start to happen, these are the, uh, this is the response, these three things. So um, bug in, it says, if you bug in, it means that you're staying right where you are. I mean, I, I can read the definition, but that's basically what it means. It means you're gonna shelter in place. You're gonna stay at your house. It means that if you had a cabin in the woods or a relative who lives somewhere far you know, out in the country, that you're not gonna go to them at this time. You, you're gonna choose to stay in place. Bug out, conversely, means you're done. Things look like they're too chaotic. You feel like your risk of exposure is far too high. Maybe there's civil unrest. Whatever the case is, it means that you take yourself and your family and you go to another location. So that's what that means. Um, all right, and then <laughs> this term, which I see all the time, and actually I thought it was really funny when I heard about it a couple years ago, but it's SHTF. And I don't cuss on my channel because sometimes children may watch my videos, so I don't wanna do that, but you know, it's where blank hits the fan. You guys can fill in the lines, fill in the blank. And you know, obviously that refers to the chaos that ensues after a disaster of some kind. And when preppers talk about being ready for SHTF, this means um, that you must be ready when no one is going to come for you. And so that basically just means that society as we know it does not exist at this moment. That doesn't necessarily mean it's not gonna come back online. It means something really crazy or bad is happening and your expectation of being able to, you know, pick up the phone and, and ring the police and have them come for you or even, uh, you know, an ambulance it's just not gonna be there because there's just gonna to be too too much need and not enough resources. So that's what that means, SHTF. Okay, so that is gonna be the end of video six and I just realized there are actually only two more for tomorrow um, in the definitions thing. And then over the weekend, I'm gonna film a bunch of other videos about things like who's in charge when um, a epidemic or pandemic happens and actually that's a question for some conversation because you know well now we have mike pence as the 
is the czar, um, and I use air quotes because I'm not sure that they actually used that term. I think they just said that he was heading that particular uh, situation. So, and, and a lot of other things about, you know, what you and your family may want to do to prepare. What does preparing look like? How can you keep yourselves entertained during a quarantine if that were to come to pass? So if any of that kind of information interests you, um, please feel free to, to subscribe and turn on that little bell. I would love to have you. And again, guys, all your comments, suggestions, just leave them below. And I hope that this was helpful to you. And if it was, please feel free to share it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow in part seven. Bye-bye.